Hey everybody, it's Mark here from Ripple Training. I saw a post on social media where someone was asking how to do a text disintegration effect in motion. So I thought that's what we would do today. Let's take a look. Here we are in motion. I've closed the timeline with Command-7 to make more space to work with. I've imported an image I created with Midjourney using the prompt, a disintegrating landscape, because I want to use the word disintegrate and put it on something a little more interesting than just a black background. So to get started here, I'll tap T for the text tool and type disintegrate, escape, I'll go to its properties, and I will reset the position parameters. I'll go to the text tab for its format, change its alignment to center. I'll crank the font size way up, and you can see I'm using a font called Viper Nora. I like this particular font because it already has a little bit of disintegration going on, but you can use any font that you want. Now I'm going to go to the Appearance tab and turn on 3D text. And for the 3D text for the material, I'm going to choose this grunge orange. To integrate a little bit better with the background, I'll increase the depth to give it a little more thickness. And I'll change the lighting style to above, since the light's kind of coming from above here, to like make it fit more in with our environment. Great, so we've got our text. Uh, the next step is to bring in the elements that we'll use to disintegrate it. And for that, I'll go to the library, to Generators, and I'm going to add Clouds. And this will be really our source. Now, by default, these clouds are animated, and that's not exactly what we want. So in the Inspector, what I'll do is change the speed down to zero. And then what I want these clouds to do is go from basically all white to all black. So I'll we'll open up the gradient and I'm going to select this white tag and I'm going to bring its location down all the way so it just touches the black tag. And I'll set a keyframe for that. I'll move forward to about two seconds. We can always adjust this later. And then I'll change that back up again. By the same token, I'll select the black one and I'll set its location all the way to the right. So we're completely black at that point. We've already got a keyframe there because we set one initially. I'll go back to the beginning of the project and now I'll take that black one and move it back here so we're white. So now if I go between them, we can see we start with completely white and go to completely black, which is exactly what we want. Now, I don't like how this looks right now. It's not jagged and rough enough. So what I'm going to do is go to filters to stylize and choose crystallize, which will give these more rough edges. You can see how that looks right now. And you can play with the size of those crystals and the speed I'm going to move to zero. If I play, you'll see by default, these also animate. I don't want them to animate. So I'll set the speed to zero. I don't want any smoothing. I want them to be nice and rough edges. And you'll notice though, that there's a little bit of gray in these. And we really want pure black and white because gray will be partially transparent on our text. So to fix that, I'm going to go to filters, color, and choose the threshold filter. And you can see right away, it knocked all of that out. We could play with the smoothest and the threshold level if we needed to get rid of more, but that looks pretty good right now. So now we have this animation from all white to all black. So all we need to do is select our text layer. We're gonna add an image mask to it. Object, add image mask and we're going to drag the clouds generator into that image mask. You can see it automatically turns off the visibility of the clouds. We could always turn it back on if we wanted to check it out. But with it off now and acting as an image mask, nothing seems to happen. And that's because our source channel is the alpha. And this doesn't have any transparency in it whatsoever. What we want is to set it for luminance. So fully white would mean show everything. Fully black would mean hide everything. Once we do that, we can see a little change. And if we play back now, we can see that fully disintegrates the text. 
And what's kind of fun about this, we can set a play range out point with option command O. And then while it's playing, we can play around with some of the different parameters. Uh, for instance, for the clouds themselves, we could make them, say, uh, really tall. And to be more obvious what's happening, if we turn the clouds back on, we can see, let me I'll turn that on and really crank up the, the vertical scale to make them tall. And then we get a very different look. I'll undo that. We could also set the horizontal and vertical scale to be very small. If you drag them all the way down, we get much smaller pieces as it disintegrates. You'll notice this is not a true 3D effect. It's really a 2D effect applied to 3D text, but it can be pretty convincing. I'm going to set this to 16 for each. And then if we wanted to apply it to the background instead, that's super easy to do. We can just drag the image mask onto our background later instead. And now when we play, the background will disintegrate. I'll move that back. Finally, we can publish this as a template to Final Cut Pro. And a cool way to deal with that is first to select our background and we'll change that into a drop zone. Now I'm going to need to scale that back up. I'm going to hold on Option and Shift to scale that back up. And that will be a drop zone in Final Cut Pro. We can even clear the existing content. So in Final Cut Pro, you could put any content in, in there you wanted. Or we can convert this project to a title. So instead of a drop zone, we'll have a new placeholder. And that placeholder will simply be the underlying video in Final Cut Pro. That's what this title background is. So now that this is a title, when it's published to Final Cut Pro, you can just place it over any video in Final Cut Pro. Before doing so, you might want to publish a couple of parameters so they can be adjusted in Final Cut Pro. For instance, for the clouds generator itself, you might want to publish the width and the height, maybe the scale for both the horizontal scale and the vertical scale. For the crystallize, we could publish the size and anything else that you'd want to adjust in Final Cut Pro. To check what's published, you select the project, and in the project pane under Publishing, we can see our published parameters, and we can rename them. I'll press Command S to save, give it a name, give it a category, and publish it. Now in Final Cut Pro, in the Titles and Generators sidebar, under Titles, in our new Special Effects category, we have the Disintegrate title. I'll press Q for Connect Edit. And there's our title in Final Cut Pro with all of our published parameters. As usual, we'd love to know your comments and what you'd like to see. Leave us a comment below. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.